data is a pollution problem of the information age and protecting privacy is the environmental challenge what do you say hey listeners here is giridhar and you are listening to the podcast giridhar's gardi today we have an amazing person on the show he is a travel enthusiast cheerful friendly and ever all one of the founders of the popular website hatkestory.com that celebrates the nobility of the human spirit through real life stories without any further ado he is welcoming the guest for today's episode rohit hi rohit welcome to giridhar's gardi how are you doing today hey hi giridhar i'm doing great thank you how about you yes i'm doing good thank you well just a quick question before we start how do you feel like being a guest on this podcast well i should say i'm very excited to be part of your podcast today and thank you giridhar for the opportunity great thank you so much for also accepting my proposal and being a part of this podcast today all right so rohit tell us what is data privacy all about so data privacy is an individual's right to control the use of you know his or her personal information we have seen that there have been a series of allegations ac- across the world you know against tech giants for misuse and mishandling of personal data this has actually changed how people look at the issue of data privacy breaches so data privacy has become a big issue nowadays across the world since the world is moving more and more towards technology and the internet based applications yes so why is it important to talk and understand about data privacy right so we have to understand that data is the oil of the information age you know the internet and mobile association of india they published a report recently which estimated that there will be around 900 million internet users in india alone by 2025 so you can imagine the amount of you know people's presence on the internet you have websites mobile applications social media platforms all of which continuously collect and store personal data about you every time you use their services the monetization of user data through targeted advertising based on your online behavior is a major revenue stream uh, for example you can take companies like google and facebook so understanding data privacy is i think important than ever today we have to understand who has access to all this information and how our data is being used yes exactly well let's come from the basics what are the common data privacy issues that we encounter in our day to day lives sure uh, so we should understand our data can be multifold right we have sensible sensitive personal data you know that can be data relating to health religion our sex life political beliefs biometrics genetics finance and what not this data can be misused in a number of ways and i think you have seen uh, multiple instances of this happening across india i'll give you a few examples let's take the common facebook fraud that is happening today so what happens is your facebook profiles have a lot of information that you unintentionally share with the public right so your profiles are copied and fraudsters will simply make a copy of your profile and they'll ask for money posing as you and all your unsuspecting friends or people who are not really tech savvy will end up transferring money and there is very little in the law that you know can protect you from such scams uh, point number 2 let's take cyber crime right scam scammers they pose as representatives of banks they say they are calling on behalf of paytm they are on behalf of government bhim upi and they'll share a qr code with you uh, on your whatsapp let's say the moment you scan that qr code you see deduction of money and within minutes all your bank accounts money is transferred to accounts elsewhere and it is very difficult to trace this and get your money back and something funny too right let's the take an example of theft there are instances where facebook posts were followed by robbers 
to target houses that were empty when owners were not home. And last but not the least, you should look at breaches also. Did you know that you know platforms like LinkedIn, Sony, PlayStation, Yahoo, in India, especially Domino's, Big Basket, all their databases had breaches. That means all your personal information, including your emails, your passwords, your addresses, are actually with hackers today. And there is very less in India that you can do to protect that which is already on the internet. And there is a popular saying, right? Once you post something on the internet, it stays there forever. Yes, exactly. In the recent days, we have uh, re really come across so many people who are actually copying the Facebook profile pic and acting as if they are sending the friend request on behalf of the actual person. Right. Okay. So uh, what are the preliminary things that we can do at an individual level to maintain data privacy? So since we are starting to depend a lot on technology nowadays, we really have to make a conscious effort to educate ourselves with increasing dependence on technology. For example, you should try to restrict yourself from sharing personally identifiable information. For example, I don't think anyone on your Facebook, what is your hometown publicly and your birth date with the year, right? You can say that in a particular month is your birthday, but it is not necessary for you to share the year as well. And another thing is, uh, we sometimes think it is okay to have the same password across platforms, which is a big problem because the moment one platform gets compromised, if the hacker is uh, trying to use the same password elsewhere where you have accounts, then that is easy access for the hacker, right? You really have to be beware of something called phishing. What they do is they send you uh, links in your email, in your WhatsApp, in your Telegram. And for a person who is not suspicious, these links are actually trying to capture data that is identifiable to you. And you should be very wary of doing something with links that you do not understand. And in terms of security, there's something called multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication, which is very important. So if you have a Gmail account today, you have to enable that. What this does is whenever you log into your Gmail, let's say from another uh, device, as a second step to verify that it is really you, you will get either a text on your phone, on your phone number, or you can go into your Gmail and authenticate, yes, that it is me who's trying to log into that particular portal. And also while browsing, uh, people make a common mistake. They think that the first, uh, let's say result in Google search, Let's say you're searching for SBI, right? Sometimes you might get a scammed link also as a result if, you know, scamsters are doing search engine optimization to promote their link first. So what will happen is you will have a lookalike of your bank, uh, bank website and you'll end up giving them the password. And from there on, things get ugly, right? And you also have to make sure that you have the lock symbol for all the websites you're visiting, you know? That means... Uh, it is being served over HTTPS, which is a secure way of serving websites. You can use uh, DuckDuckGo, which is a search engine. Unlike Google, DuckDuckGo does not collect personally identifiable information about users. And the biggest thing is uh, nothing is free on the internet. So never use a public Wi-Fi. You better have a uh, internet connection that you're paying for, which is secure. Yes. Uh in fact, we have to say that this data privacy is the need of the hour based on all the examples that you were trying to quote here. Definitely agree. Yeah. Okay. So now let's uh, look at the broad sense. Now that we can, we understood how we can manage the data privacy at an individual level, let's talk about an enterprise or business. So, what are the ways to implement this data privacy for an enterprise or business? So, generally, uh, if you go to, let's say, European Union or USA or Singapore, they have certain data privacy laws that they've enacted that you know define certain policies 
that each and every enterprise that operates on their land should follow. So no matter what enterprise or business you run, there has to be a defined strict security policy where you classify data and you define a security policy around it. And you have to enforce the enterprises to ensure enterprise grade security. Uh, so you do continuous audits and you see if uh, there is some vulnerability that many open search research researchers are you know, finding every now and then, then SSF, your platform is vulnerable for those and you know, continuously keep fixes. So data privacy is a mandate nowadays for any enterprise. And only if you can ensure the privacy of your users, I think you will build trust as an enterprise or business on the internet age. Amazing, amazing. So recently we have even heard this term called GDPR uh, at, at the international level of maintaining this data privacy. So uh, Rohit, can you let us know what is this GDPR and how is it helpful for maintaining data privacy? Uh, GDPR, if you see the full form, it is a general data protection regulation, which is a regulation announced by the European Union in 2016. So what GDPR does is it sets a set of instructions and asks all businesses to apply it, especially for EU customers and not just EU residing uh, companies. Uh, I can give you an example. GDPR will mandate companies to collect minimum necessary data. And the best part is the data collector has to give all the users an option to delete their data and without their consent, companies cannot use their data. So that is the reason after 2016, you must have seen that many websites never used to ask you for permission to you know, accept cookies. Now, majority of websites, you get a pop-up where they'll ask you if you want to accept all cookies or you want to select what cookies are stored based on your browsing data. Yeah. Okay, so how about this Data Privacy Act in India? Uh, unfortunately, India has a long way to go in terms of data privacy. So one good thing is uh, our Honorable Supreme Court uh, declared that the right to privacy is a fundamental right. And this was a judgment in August uh, 2017. But we still do not have a proper data protection law in place uh, on the lines of GDPR. Uh, the only thing that regulates personal information protection is the Information Technology Act, which is kind, uh, kind of old. Uh, it was passed in 2000. And we also have some information technology rules. Uh, those are also old, 2011. And these are the only rules and regulations that protect uh, personal information of Indians per se. But Government of India also had made an effort for a bill called Personal Data Protection Bill. And this was withdrawn in 2019 from the parliament because there were so many amendments and so, so much was proposed to change that. So government now proposes to redraft the law entirely and come up with a new framework. And I think that will include a lot of things. It will include a new digital privacy bill, a new bill to update the existing IT Act, uh, national data governance framework, policies, and also regulations on cybersecurity. That's that's good to hear. Then, according to you, uh, are there any other reforms that can be brought further with respect to data privacy laws in India? Well, in my honest opinion, we should definitely put in place something concrete and comprehensive on the lines of GDPR or PDPA. PDPA is similar to GDPR, but it applies to Singapore. And we are citizens of the internet deserve an opt-out option and obviously since the data is ours, I think we deserve full control over how our data is used by other third-party enterprises. And also I think cyber security standards should be strictly enforced by all enterprises irrespective of the country they're operating in. And last but not the least, I think enterprises must be held accountable and punished for data breaches. Only then I think they'll take this as a good responsibility and uh, you know, keep themselves up to date to avoid any data breaches in the future. Yeah, exactly. And then, 
uh, what is the positive impact on society if we can maintain this data privacy? So one thing for sure is you limit monopoly of uh, internet-based companies from influencing our decision making. I'll give you an example. Let's say you have been searching on the browser for, let's say, Puma shoes or Reebok shoes. Surprisingly, within the next five minutes, if you are logging into Facebook, you'll see an ad for shoes, especially Puma and Reebok, since you have been searching it on Google. So two different platforms, yet the same advertiser is tracking you across two different platforms. And if you are continuously shown something, that tends to influence your decision making. So that is a big problem. So the positive impact is if they are not influencing your mental state and decision making, and I think you are still making a conscious choice. Second, uh, data privacy will drive a positive change in terms of transparency and accountability of organizations. And of course, it guarantees the fundamentals of freedom of thought and speech. And of course, consumers will trust companies uh, that limit use of personal data. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So lastly, just one message for our listeners with respect to our today's concept, maintaining data privacy. All I want to say to the listeners out there is go secure your accounts today and ensure that you protect your web browsing accounts. Okay. Thank you, Rohit. Thank you for the short message. All right. So now it's time for us to move on to a special segment in our podcast that is the rapid fire round. Are you ready? Yes. Great. So Rohit, here's my first question to you in the rapid fire round. Data or information? Data. Great. Privacy or secrecy? Privacy. <laughs> All right. Confidentiality or integrity? Integrity. Yeah. GDPR or PDPA? Uh, GDPR. <laughs> okay. Why so? Uh, PDPA does not really uh, account for all the uh, regulations that you expect in terms of privacy, but I think GDPR so far has been the best regulation. Oh, that's great. Okay. Hacking or cracking? Hacking. <laughs> okay. Postcard or email? I think we have we are done with postcards. So email definitely. <laughs> okay. Again, the privacy matters. <laughs> okay. Right. WhatsApp or yeah. WhatsApp or Messenger? WhatsApp. I think Messenger has more spam. <laughs> Okay. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Okay. Mobile or laptop? Uh, I think we have moved beyond laptops now. People are moving towards uh, mobility, so mobile, definitely. <laughs> Great. So, Rohit, here's my last question to you in the rapid fire round. Uh, my favorite one. Let's see what you're going to say. Sure. Giridhar or Rohit? Hey, definitely Giridhar. You are the man today. <laughs> <laughs> but you are my guest today and I'll be Rohit here. <laughs> Feeling it All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you, Rohit. Thank you so much for being with us on the show today and we look forward to having you once again on the podcast in future. It was a pleasure to be here. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you once again for being with us today. Thank you, Kirill. Yeah. Well, that's the end of the episode, listeners. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. I'll be back next week with another amazing guest. See you.